Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotac and today Apple released iOS 26.1 Beta 3. iOS 26.1 Beta 3 is available to developers and iOS 26.1 Public Beta 3 should be out by the time you're watching this video or sometime tomorrow. This came in at 2.21 gigabytes on my iPhone 17 Pro Max and was released alongside many other updates, with 26.1 Beta 3 being available on iPadOS, watchOS, as well as macOS, tvOS, HomePodOS, and visionOS as well. So if you're a developer or soon public beta tester, you'll be able to install those as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. And as you can see, the build number is 23B5064E. There are some new features and updates in this particular update, but the first thing that's been updated is the modem number. So if you're on iOS 26.1 beta 3 and you've updated from beta 2, you'll see a different modem number, as well as some people are having carrier updates as well. Now a new feature in this update is something I talked about last week, but they've added to it with beta 3. If we go into our settings, we'll go down to privacy and security and wherever we are here, we pass that under privacy and security, scroll to the bottom, you'll see background security improvements. But this time around, we now have one that's showing installed and you can see installed today with iOS 26.1 beta three. We have some options here to remove and restart as well. Now this would be great when we have public releases. So maybe the next one comes out, there's an issue with it for you. You can easily uninstall it without using a Mac or windows computer. So hopefully we see that we'll have to test that out a little bit later. Now, as far as other features, well, if we go back into our settings here, and again, this time we go under general within general, if we scroll down, you'll see a new option for local capture. Local capture was part of the control center before with this icon here, you could add it, but now we have some options for it. So it says save location. So you can select where you want to save your local captures and also select audio only. And it says add local capture to control center to record your own audio and video during a call to save and edit later. So this is a new option, at least with additional options here as well. So it's great to have that with one more setting. And if we go over to the next page, you'll see Apple TV. We have a new icon with additional color in it. So that's something you can see here where there's more color in the icon itself. And this goes along with new rebranding or renaming of Apple TV plus in an announcement today for the F one movie coming to Apple TV plus Apple removed the plus name and now it's just Apple TV. So maybe this will hint at a new Apple TV device. So instead of being Apple TV plus, it will be Apple TV on maybe a home device or something along those lines. But now we're watching Apple TV on Apple TV. So that's a bit confusing. We'll probably see some updates for that as well, though. The only place they've omitted it though, in this particular app, as far as the TV plus name is in the code when it has to do with terms and conditions. So we'll probably see this updated very soon. Now, also, it looks like we've got some more liquid glass in this update. So for example, down here at the dock on the bottom, you'll see that it looks a little bit more transparent. At least it does on my screen. You'll see it's more transparent as opposed to frosted glass. Now this seemed to change for me for whatever reason on beta two that's on the left here. And again, around some of the folders and icons, it looks like the liquid glass effect may be a little bit stronger. You can see this particularly in different modes. So if we customize and switch to light mode or default mode here, Again, sometimes on the folders, you'll see slight differences here. Now, some people are seeing more of this than others, but I checked it through different apps such as music, and I didn't really see a difference here with the overall liquid glass. So it looks pretty good overall, and they're keeping that glass effect, but we're seeing even more of it, it seems. Also, if we go to clear icons, there's a difference. Some people are seeing some odd reflections when they're in different folders with many app icons. So I'm not seeing this, but some people are seeing some odd shadows depending on what you're looking at. So let me know if you're experiencing this or noticing a difference with liquid glass, but I looked in the control center, the lock screen and everywhere else. And if anything, there's a little bit more glass as far as that goes, but many people seemingly have bugs or visual bugs with liquid glass lately, especially on these clear icons. Within settings, there's a new option under accessibility within accessibility. If we scroll down to where it says touch within the touch menu, scroll to the bottom, you'll see a new option for prefer single touch actions. It says prefer that user interface items require a single touch instead of a sliding action. So you can enable that. Now, if you'd like to use that instead of sliding, it can enable a single touch. 
With beta 2 last time under the clock app, if you set an alarm, there's now a slide to cancel option. They've updated the graphic for this a little bit, so we'll wait for the alarm to go off and I'll show you what it looks like. So the alarm is going off and you'll see the graphic now is a little bit wider. So it fills more of the screen and we can slide to stop or snooze. So they've even made it bigger this time around as compared to before. Now there's quite a few things mentioned in the code itself. Aaron P613 found a few different things worth mentioning. The first one is it seems third party AI integration is coming soon. So what that means is currently under Apple intelligence, we can select to use chat GPT. There's been rumors of the ability to use things such as Gemini, and it looks like we'll have third party options very soon. Also, there's mentions of notification forwarding in the code. What this would allow is for third party devices such as Apple Watch to receive notifications from our phone. So if we don't want to use an Apple Watch, it would be more compatible with third party devices, maybe a Pixel Watch or others. Also, it looks like there's mention of native spyware notifications. So if you had something attack your phone, Apple could notify you of that and make sure you're aware. So that's something it looks like could be coming in the near future based on the code found by Aaron P613 on X. Also referenced within the code is a new wallpaper. It says ethereal currents of vibrant light flow into serene darkness shaped by soft undulating paths that create a striking visual harmony. So it looks like we could have a new wallpaper soon. However, they haven't updated the wallpaper within settings still. So we talked about that before, where if we go into display and brightness with beta two, they updated the wallpaper here to iOS 26, but under display zoom, they haven't updated it yet either. So maybe they'll do that in beta four. Now this week I wanted to mention also that Apple discontinued the Clips app. So if you search for Clips in the App Store, you'll no longer find it. And also they mentioned it in a support document where it's no longer going to be updated. So it looks like it's permanently discontinued. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this Apple TV app looks like it's in preparation for a new Apple TV device, or maybe a home device coming in the near future. At this point, we don't know what that is, but we could have some announcements this week. It's been rumored that we'll have an October Apple event, or at least a set of announcements with maybe some new MacBook updates, as well as iPad updates to go along with an Apple TV, possibly Vision Pro and more. So of course, I'll keep you updated on that, but I would expect that any day this week. As far as bugs and bug fixes, well, there is one thing that actually is working now. You'll see the app settings shortcut. I can now add a shortcut to my control center and it will actually allow me to select a shortcut. Prior to this update, I couldn't do that. So if we go down to shortcuts or I'll just search for it here and we add one, it pops up and has me select a shortcut. This is how it's supposed to behave. I reported it as an issue and it looks like it's now resolved. So that's great to see. And we can now run that And this app settings one I really like. So maybe you're in music, for example, or maybe you're in the app store, whatever you're in, go into app settings. It will bring you directly into the setting for that application. So it's a great shortcut. My friend Quinn from snazzy labs actually posted it and I'll link it in the description if you want to check it out. Also, when it comes to the wallpaper bug, well, it doesn't appear to be fixed. In fact, it looks like it desaturates or even dims a little bit when you go from the lock screen back to the home screen. So it looks like this has not been fixed yet. And there's a couple known issues on Apple's notes. So if we go into notes and on Apple's public facing release notes, we can go here and take a look. A couple things are mentioned that weren't before, such as airdrop. There's a known issue where the airdrop icon in the iOS share sheet has some visual defects at the corners. So it looks like they're paying attention to overall defects. There's also a new one that has to do with lock screen, and it says devices might sleep unexpectedly while using certain apps on the lock screen calculator, timer, and notes. They give a workaround where rewake the device with the slide button, iPhone, or the top button, iPad, and relaunch the affected app. So those are some new known issues that still exist. And of course, if you're having issues, make sure you report them in the feedback app, go into your app library. And that's a bit slow here when I go to search, but you'll see feedback and then you can report them there. So make sure you're doing that. Check through the known notes and see if it's mentioned. If it isn't, be sure to report that feedback. Also, one thing I wanted to mention is I already had a respring on the iPad when I was setting the icons, going to edit and then customize it resprings or reboots the sort of the screen here that you see, you get a little dial and then it comes back up to the home screen. So that's something I already experienced with beta three, where I hadn't had that with beta two. As far as releases, well, this week we could also see a new release of iOS 26.0.2. According to Mac rumors, they're seeing it in their analytics. So we could see that as soon as tomorrow or later this week. And Apple did stop signing iOS 26. So it means iOS 26.0.1 is the only available option to downgrade currently. 
Also, I think we're on a weekly schedule now as far as the releases. So iOS 26.1 beta four, I would expect as soon as next Monday with maybe a beta five, six or seven, like we had last time, or we could only have up to maybe four or five. We don't really know, but I would expect it maybe in early November. That seems likely. We don't have an exact date as far as the iOS 26.1 public release yet. As far as if you should install iOS 26.1 beta three, well, if you're on beta two, I would absolutely install it, test it out, provide feedback. But if you're on iOS 26.0.1, I would probably hold off and wait for iOS 26.0.2. I would never install a beta trying to solve an issue you're having with a public release. So I would hold off if you're sort of worried about that or nervous about that and just wait for the public release as well. But if you're a beta tester already, definitely install the new one. When it comes to performance, well, performance this time is a little bit mixed. Like I showed you before, you go into the app library and there's a noticeable delay. So again, if I go to search, you can see there's a good second delay or so. I'm finding some odd issues throughout. When I first booted this up, all of the screen icons were a little bit slow to load. So there's definitely some odd performance things going on. But when you go and maybe scroll here, you'll see things are smooth in general. But using this seems like there's a little odd delay here and there. No touch delays, but just sort of action delays. Sometimes it seems a little bit slow. So that's on the 17 Pro Max. So let me know if you're on an older device experiencing the same thing. When it comes to the overall heat of the device, so far this is staying nice and cool. The latest devices seem to stay nice and cool, at least the Pro models anyway, of course with the new vapor chamber, but in general it seems to be a good experience as far as that goes. It's not overly hot, but again this will take a few days to see if anything changes there. When it comes to battery life, well again that will take a few days to test. I've been using the public version here on this 17 Pro Max, and the public version, if we take a look at battery on 26.0.1, you'll see currently battery health. I've only got two cycles here. And on this device, if we take a look at the battery, the overall cycle count is at 10 with 100%. So on this device, I'm getting through the day. No problem. I've only been using it for a few days and I may use the iPhone air full time next, but we'll take a look at usage and you'll see yesterday, three hours and 10 minutes of screen active time with 62% usage. So it's getting even better and I'm getting through the day. No problem. But on the beta, of course, we'll have to wait and see. It takes a few days to measure that. And just today, one hour and 21 minutes of screen active time. And I've only used 16%. So we'll give it a few days to see what it's like. And of course, we'll We'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up. When it comes to storage, let's go ahead and take a look. So we'll go back to our general settings and then we'll go to storage and under storage, we'll wait for it to load, scroll to the bottom. And you can see it's taking up four gigabytes less than beta two was at least on the 16 pro max compared to the 17 pro max. So currently iOS is or taking up 14.09 gigabytes, which is more, but Apple intelligence is taking up four gigabytes less almost. So pretty good overall. Again, it may be refined more, or maybe it needs to download some new updates here, but either way, it looks like it's taking up less storage, at least for Apple intelligence. When it comes to benchmarks, I did run them initially. They're okay. 3,879 for single core, 9,489 for multi-core. We take a look at the history. It's definitely not as good as it was on the weekend with beta two, but it should improve over the next few days. And I would expect that there's a lot of things going on in the background that are causing processes to be used and probably not getting the best performance yet. So again, we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video. So that's everything so far in iOS 26.1 beta three. Of course, if we find additional features, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. And let me know if you found anything additional as well in the comments below. There's odd visual bugs throughout still. And of course that slowness I showed you, but hopefully it takes a little time and then everything will speed up. But we'll talk about that again a little bit later. If you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.